Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of this um, Monday Motivation. It's almost like an episode, isn't it? So um, thank you so much for joining me. I am just going to check, oops, check that we've got you all on. I can see you starting to pop on now, so thank you. Do say good morning, you know the drill now, if you're a regular viewer of these Monday Motivations. Um, sometimes when you pop on I can just see a number count and other times I can see a name. If you want me to say hello to you then just kind of type into the box and say hi, let me know that you can hear me and all that kind of stuff and I will um, say hello back. So already hot off the, hot off the button there, um, Ian saying hey up Jenny, hiya, good morning. And um, good morning to your gorgeous daughter, very skilled daughter, who's been rocking it out in the football world there. So um, just saying hi to her too. So this morning's Monday motivation is one that I hope will not only motivate your morning, it will motivate your day and also your week. And as it's the last day of the month, I'm hoping that it will wrap up this month really nicely for you and allow you just to get into a really um, great spring start for November. There's all sorts of things today, whether you're into Halloween um, or Semaine or just last day of the month, first day of the month or whatever you would prefer to do, it's all here for you. Hi Ali, so Ali says hi as well. So we've got, um, we've got Ian and Ali and Ali saying hi Jenny and Ian with a little smile. So uh, thank you for joining me. So this morning, I thought I would talk about something that I have found immensely helpful and um, give you a resource of where you can go um, to get more from um, none other than the lovely Oprah Winfrey and Deepak Chopra. So before I start talking about what that is and, and that kind of stuff, I, um, I just thought I would uh, share with you kind of my experience of this thing, which I'll let you know in a moment. So um, back in about 2008, I think it was, back end of 2008, um, 2009, I remember um, going to a personal development course. I actually went to an introduction um, to um, a modality out there, train, a training modality and a coaching modality. But I remember identifying really, really quickly that I found it difficult to kind of like switch my mind off, you know? If somebody had said to me back then, you know, go and sit in a room by yourself, don't take anything with you, be really quiet, I have to be honest, it would have done my head in, it, I, it would have driven me mad. Um, and I found it really hard to sit and do nothing. Because to me, if I was sitting and doing nothing, I was wasting time. If I was wasting time, I wasn't being effective. If I wasn't being effective, I wasn't being a good employee as I was back then. So fast forward to today, I um, have a lot of people who ask me for um, some good strategies or good plans to get into their day, or they feel overwhelmed, they feel like they've got too much to do, they feel under pressure, they feel stressed. And every single time, this thing that I'm gonna talk about this Monday is something that is like, oh, frog in my throat, <clears throat> something that I go back to time and time again. Um, so I thought I would share it with you. So I'm gonna be talking about meditation. So let me give you some framework for that. I've got my notes on my, um, my little iPod here, so if you can hear a funny click, that's what it is. So back um, last year, I think it was, around June um, 2015, I was asked, Morning all, says Ivona. Hi, Ivona, thanks for joining. Um, back in 2000, June 2015, I was asked by um, a group of high performers. So uh, these were people that were kind of like really at the top of their game, um, very successful in business, whether that was their own business or um, whether they were, you know, working at quite a high executive level in someone else's business. Um, some of them had had success in the business area. Uh, many of them were very successful in their lives. And from the outside looking in, hey, Alan, good morning, Alan. Alan joins us as well. Hi. 
Um, many of these people had what's deemed as success from the outside looking in. So they had like really great relationships, great businesses, great positions at work. Some of them were quite wealthy. Um, many of them had like the families that they desired. Um, some of them were able to go traveling quite a bit, quite extensively and have that as their everyday life. So they asked me what um, I would attribute as the best five investments and I'm looking down just to make sure that I don't go off track. So what was the, they said, um, what's on your list of investments that have changed your life? So I pulled up five and just for context, I'll, I'll let you know what all five were. So um, <laughs> and this is for me. Um, number one, flowers on a weekly basis. I love nature and this is for me personally, this is not a because I love it, you have to love it too. Hey, Alison, morning. Alison's one of my um, dear old friends from back in the day. We met at Thomas Cook's and we've partied and stuff as well. <laughs> so anyone that's connected to me on Facebook would have seen my post yesterday where I celebrated my very best friend and, um, and Alison would have known us both back in the day then too. So five things that felt really, really great um, for me anyway was flowers. So I used to have this thing called Fresh Flower Friday and every Friday I would just go, um, might be to the supermarket, sometimes to the florist, but mainly to the supermarket actually, and just buy some flowers because I love nature. I love being surrounded by nature. It made me feel good. So I guess something to take away from that in terms of motivating your day and your week, what makes you feel good? If flowers are your thing, you might even go in the back garden. It could be dandelions. It doesn't matter what they are. Go and pick something, and um, you know, all these lovely autumn leaves and berries. You might want to put a, an array of those in your house. The second thing that I said that I found um, really great on my list of investments, believe it or not, was spa days. Now, before you all think that I'm some sort of diva, one of the things that I like about spas is the ambience. It's the stillness of the spa. And you know what? I could go to a spa and not have a treatment. I could just sit in the, the, the um, a very hot jacuzzi, it has to be, but I could sit in a jacuzzi all day, just like a little lizard, you know, <laughs> sit in the water, get out and that kind of stuff. But it's identifying what I love so much about that. And it's the ambiance. It's normally very peaceful, very calming, and just a lovely place just to sit and chill. Which is very different from back in the day when I couldn't stop or, or do any, or do nothing as I deemed for a minute. The third thing that I found really relaxing was meditation. And it's meditation that I'm going to talk about in a little bit more detail this morning. <clears throat> The fourth thing that I found was um, being involved in um, what's known as masterminds. And if you're not involved in a mastermind, you know the, the saying that two heads are better than one. Imagine where you can be with another person, another group of people. You all have a similar goal. So if you've got a business, for example, <coughs> dear me, froggy throat this morning. I can't believe that I've been up for ages. Maybe it's the fog outside. Um, so it, when you, go, when you sit with a group of people, you've all got a common goal. Um, it might not be exactly the same goal, but you, it's like two heads are better than one because you've got this collective, um, almost like a collective power where you all sit together and you are like looking at the good of getting a result for that person. It's a bit like when you sit with friends and you kind of talk something out, you know? Um, but masterminds is a really great way to propel your life forward. And sometimes people think that in order for the mastermind to be effective, that it has to be led by someone very knowledgeable and that, you know, everybody has to be kind of pumping hard and overworking. And that's not necessarily true. Um, in fact, in my own experience of both running masterminds and being in masterminds, there is a person that normally is responsible for bringing the group together. But it doesn't mean that they always have to lead from the front and have to be the person that does everything. So um, again, being in that environment, surrounding yourself with like minds, like minded people who have all got the best like intentions for you. There's something really powerful about that. And in the times that I've experienced that and been part of that, I've actually found that it's helped to propel me forward in leaps and bounds. And then the fifth thing is fun. Invest in time to have fun for yourself and with other people is like of paramount importance. It's the thing that reminds you not to take life too seriously. It's the thing that brings light into what you're doing. But out of those five things, so for me, there were flowers, 
fresh flower Friday, um, spa day jacuzzi, somewhere where I could just sit and chill and relax, and it might not have even been in a spa. I remember um, vividly going to America for a conference, a three day conference, and um, in the pool area they had this jacuzzi. I would get up at like six in the morning and I would just sit there, there was no one else around. I'd sit there and listen to my meditation CD and it was like pure bliss, absolutely pure bliss. So let's talk more about meditation and why I feel that it's um, a great investment to have in your life. So I'll just pop those bits down on there. So the first thing that I want to say is that there are a few myths around meditation that um, need to be busted. Meditation is not about being in a cult or doing anything weird and wonderful. Meditation is about the ability to kind of almost like soothe your mind, relax your mind. The other thing um, that I hear a lot about meditation is that you have to um, clear your mind of all thoughts and words. Well, I don't know about you, have you ever tried to do that? I mean, hands up for those of you that are watching who ever tried meditation, if you have put me or yes or whatever. Um, and it's okay if you've tried it and felt like it hasn't worked properly, which is what I hear a lot. But here's one of the things, and I still, I still talk about this with my clients to this day, when it comes to setting up our day. And I guess it brings me on to another myth, that because it's a quiet activity, that it doesn't leave you like pumped and go, 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 go. Again, not true. What it does is, like if you imagine that your head is filled with just water, okay? You've got water in your head with a little bit of space at the top with some air. I find what meditation does is, imagine somebody puts in a big blob of, like kind of like a heavy oil. Um, and I say heavy oil because this oil doesn't sit on the top, it just sinks down in a great big blob, sinks right down to the bottom of that water in your head. For me, meditation, can get me to a place of complete stillness and when I'm sort of down underneath that water so to speak I can be in the most still of places I don't need to switch off my mind I don't need to um, not think about anything else I just my thoughts just go down to this place so any thoughts that I have going through my mind or my head will come with me but they'll just sit there and I'll just, it's almost as if like you're watching a little goldfish swish, swim by. You just watch it swim by. So when you're meditating and you're thinking, oh, I wonder what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. I need to do the shopping. It's okay to think that. Let that thought go through. And for me, especially at the start, it was just a case of, oh yeah, okay, I'm thinking about the shopping. Back to the meditation. So Alison says, yep, she's done it. So um, absolutely, it's it's one of my go-to things for setting up my day, my week, my year, my month. And if you can do it consistently and keep on with that meditation pr um, practice consistently, you'll find that it it really changes the way you think about things. Now, one of the other things, I see that Namisha's joined us and Namisha is the queen of this. In fact, in um, a very recent um, seven day mindset makeover, Namisha was the expert that I brought in to talk about meditation of different levels, whether you're a beginner, whether you haven't got started yet and how to take it further. So like one of the things um, that I really love about meditation as well is that um, many of my um, clients, because these are the people that I get to speak to and work with very close up, um, they might be going through something and then they'll have this feeling of panic, they'll have this feeling of um, not knowing what to do. And when you've started your day with a meditation, you don't know what life will throw at you, you don't know what will come up in the day, but what you will know is that because you've already been to that kind of smooth place in your head that I described where you just sit and it's almost like you get clarity because the doing nothing is actually doing something. When you've been to that place first thing before you've done anything else with your day, and although there's no right or wrong with this, I am a big advocate of meditating before you do anything else. Literally, before your feet touch the ground in the morning, the best time to do that is to meditate. And there have been times when I haven't had time to meditate. So I've woken up 
a bit earlier. Now, for those of you that are worried about the, the time factor on this, you can start meditating from as little as 10 minutes a day. I've got um, you know, lots of different kind of meditation music I can listen to. So you can take it from just 10 minutes a day to you know, as long as you want, an hour or, or more. You know, I've got friends that, um, I've got a friend that gets up at like 4.30 and she meditates for three hours, you know, it's part of what, what she does. So the comments coming in, um, yeah, Namisha said, it's my go-to with lots of love hearts, absolutely. And when you meet Namisha, you can get that vibe from her. She has got that stillness in her. Um, and it's not to say that anyone that meditates is superhuman and doesn't get affected by what goes on around them. It just gives you some sort of coping mechanism, I think, to, to help you navigate the things that life throw at you in a different way. And, you know, sometimes the people that meditate are their own worst enemies. They beat themselves up and say, oh, I've been doing this for ages. I shouldn't let this thing worry me. And when you think about it, if you hadn't meditated or hadn't got into the practice of meditation, it's likely that when that thing happened, you will react maybe worse to it or it stays with you. And this is one of the things I found hugely beneficial for me from someone that thought I couldn't quiet my mind. You know, if I was, I remember working corporately and a director said something really cutting to me. Um, I'm not quite sure, that I, I think there was an intent for it to be slightly cutting, but not as cutting as I received it. And I remember these were in my days of pre-meditation and I, I carried that with me for like literally for weeks, for months and for years I kind of looked back at this particular incident and wouldn't almost let it go. I found that post-meditation I was able to, yeah, I would still flip out sometimes at things but the time in which I did it would be a matter of minutes or hours as to, um, as opposed to um, you know, days and weeks and just kind of not letting stuff go. I see a few comments are coming in, so I'm just going to um, to just have a look at those. So, um, Ivona said, thanks for clarifying this. Namisha says, um, meditation allows you to create a space in your head. It literally programs the neurons in your brain to navigate your day. Absolutely. So even if something pretty rubbish comes up, um, it allows you to take an easier path through it instead of being... Um, caught by the moment um, and, and what's created and I, I then it then goes on to say meditation isn't the same as reflection time which I refer to no absolutely not um, and this is maybe a subjective opinion for me um, Ivona meditation time and when you reflect you reflect with the purpose and the the clue is in the the re of everything re-energize redo something it's like you revisit something when you're reflecting, um, you are purposely, you know, it might be a quiet place or whatever, but you're purposely going through and reviewing what you're doing. With meditation, meditation is more preemptive. You are going to a quiet place. You're quieting down your mind as much as you can. If not, you're observing your thoughts. And this is preparing you for what is about to come even though you don't know what is about to come. And sometimes in days we do, we might have a meeting or something that we need to do. So if you've got any other questions, please do um, tap them in the box below. And if any of you watching this have got things to share with each other on here, please do. If you're watching this on the recording, please feel free just to kind of tap in and, and share your experiences as well. So, oh yeah, namisha has gone back and said, no, Ivana, it's not, um, it's not. Reason being, meditation's about not thinking, i.e. the mind needs to be empty. And this is one of the th reasons why I didn't actually meditate for um, the first few years, because I couldn't empty my mind, so I thought I was doing it all wrong. So I would say, if this is you, and you want to experience meditation, start as you mean to go on, um, and don't think that your mind has to be completely blank. Do what you can to take yourself into a space that's quieter, even if you have to lock yourself in the toilet or the bathroom for five or ten minutes. Now... There's a couple of things that will assist you with this, and it's how we breathe. And again, um, some schools of thought, and there's lots of different types of meditation out there, are to breathe, you know, to slow down your breathing and slow down your breath. Now, by doing this, there's a certain stillness. You can see by the motion of my hands, if you're breathing and you're breathing like this, there's a lot of energy to it. But when you're breathing and you're slowing your breathing down, you'll start to notice that you start to relax. You slow your breathing down, you start to relax, maybe in your neck or your shoulders, which is a place that holds a lot of tension. Secret other place we hold tension in our jaws. We clench our, our 
cheeks and we become so accustomed to doing it we don't realize so when you start your breathing down you're not now reflecting or thinking back on things that you've um, done or things you're about to do when you are breathing and you're slowing down your breathing you're now thinking um, and you are normally still thinking but you're now starting to notice I guess in your body where there's any tension being held so if you're sitting down great take your shoes off great um, make sure that you feel good in terms of your temperature you might be a bit chilly so put a coat or a blanket or something around you so you feel like at an optimum temperature and once this process starts to happen that might be initially all you do to meditate just to notice now at this point i think it's great to give you a resource um so deepak and oprah today start their 21 day meditation meditation um experience it's not really a challenge it is an experience it's free and if your um, immediate thought is, gosh, I'm too busy, I've got too much on to do this, this is exactly the reason why I would say you need to meditate. Do what I did. Set your alarm 15 minutes earlier. Stay cosy in bed if you like, especially on these darker mornings. And put your headphones in and just listen. Deepak and Oprah um, have got a theme. They will speak to you at the beginning. They'll let you know what that day's um, meditation piece is about. And then they'll guide you through what to do. And if you want to take it further, um, you've even got um, the ability, especially if you're listening from your phone or something like that, you've even got the ability to then reflect and journal. And that's where the reflection piece I've owned is then really cements to what you're learning. OK, so you can um, then kind of reflect. And those thoughts that were coming up. So not necessarily a quiet or silent mind if you're um, more new to this or not so much in a regular practice. Those thoughts that are coming up can then float through. And as they float through, there will some that will feel significant, some that will feel like they need capturing. What I do is I'll have um, my journal and my pen by the side of my bed or by the side of my chair or wherever I am meditating or even by the side of the jacuzzi as it was far away so it didn't get splashed by, um, by the water. And then anything that came up that felt of significance, no matter how random it was, I would write it down. And it's interesting, the more and more you do that, the more it's like you get access to yourself. And that access might be, Jenny, I know that you wanted to do three hours worth of work today in such and such a time, but you don't need to. You know, and sometimes like, I've been, I've been, um, I've supposed to have gone to like networking meetings and things like that. And in meditation, my body's just said, you know what? You need a bit of time for yourself. You'll be better off spending that time going for a walk in nature, going and having a sleep for an hour, or making yourself something nourishing to eat, like a nice soup or something. It's like your body knows and your body can then tell you what you need because you've been in that quiet space. So Ivona says, thanks for this um, preparation. I understand, lovely. You've read my mind, Jenny, too busy. Um, and absolutely, Ivona, um, busyness is like one of the biggest ills of um, our society and you're not alone in that I come across this quite a lot with different people um, in our society um, especially over here we're we're rewarded we're rewarded for being busy how many times has someone said to you hi how are you doing oh so busy and it's like you're almost celebrated oh that's good to hear uh, no it isn't um, when we are busy we are normally busy doing a collection of things we deem are important and what I found um, for myself in meditation was that I, it enabled me just to sit back, sit back and look at what actually needed doing, what was actually getting me specific results. A lot of people think, for example, oh, I'm busy because I'm doing this course or that course and I'm learning this. Well, that's a way to be busy, but there's no point in going and learning to do something or going out and doing something if it isn't getting you closer to what you what you want to do. Um, it's a bit like when you've got, you know, if you've got kids and they're really tiny and you're getting them ready for school. Can you imagine if you were like, I'm going to get you ready for school, but I'm also going to do this and do this and do that. The kids would never get dressed. They'd never get out the door. You barely get to school on time. So having all of these different balls juggling in the air is one of the biggest symptoms and clues that I see to people needing to do something like meditation. Meditation is the quickest, most effective. As I said, I was speaking to this group of high performers, you know, many of them were so uber successful 
and the piece that's often missing for people that are too busy or high performing or feeling stressed or noticing that things are kind of agitating them is normally this piece of meditation. The problem is because it sounds so easy and sounds like such an insignificant addition to someone's life, people dismiss it. People absolutely dismiss it. And I'd really love to stop that. So Namisha's sharing and says, guys, it's been life changing for me. I promise you, things that have an immense positive impact in our lives always feel icky to start with because they're so effective at getting to the core of um, what needs to shift. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, um, another experience that I'll also share, and thank you for sharing that, Namisha, is that um, once I started to get more consistent in my meditation, I freaked out less about things. I began to have more success in certain areas of things where I was really kind of like um, committed to applying it. And a lot of that kind of extra energy, and it, it felt busy to me, but a lot of that extra energy where I felt like I couldn't switch off, I couldn't not do anything, I couldn't relax, um, just seemed to be able to fall into place a bit more. It's like the gift of giving myself that 15 minutes a day of meditation gave me so much more back in time, in energy, in headspace, in clarity, in knowing what I was going for, in knowing where I was wasting time, money, energy, and knowing where to harness time, money and energy. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. So what I will do straight after this, I'll put a post to the Deepak and Oprah meditation challenge. I say it starts today, about eight o'clock every morning into your inbox, you'll get the link to the to the um, to the challenge to listen to. If like me, you have like um, a smartphone and you can get the meditation um, app on your phone, which is free, then you can listen through your phone. I like that because I've always got my headphones with me. I can go out on the go and I can listen to it and it really sets up my day. In fact, something that Ivona said really touched me in my too busy itis, couldn't stop doing things, I was, you know, had too much going on, was that quite often through meditation, it would show me which bits to kind of get rid of and drop, which bits were completely insignificant and which bits weren't. And it's really surprising. Gives you such a clarity of focus and a wisdom. I, you know, I can't sing its praises enough. So just before um, I get ready to finish this Monday, um, this Monday motivation, I only said Monday mindset makeover, Monday motivation. If you've got any questions or comments, please pop them in the box below. Thank you for the hearts and the loves. And I'm just going to read um, out the rest of the comments. So managing time 24 hours a day. Exactly. Avona, um, I... I kid you not, when you meditate, you no longer have to manage anything. It's like you can start to go into more of an automatic pilot, more of a flow, um, and it's just really, you know, give it a try and see. Try the Deepak and Chopra meditation and see how you get on. It doesn't matter what else you're doing. Do that first of all. Do it in the morning. Some people leave it until bedtime. Um, and my suspicion is if you're tempted like me to leave it until bedtime, it's normally because underneath the surface you're tempted to leave it until a bit later. And it's a good putting off way. And then by the time you get to the end of the day, you're either too tired, you fall off the wagon, you don't sleep. The other great thing just to say about the Oprah and Deepak meditation challenge is that although there's a piece every day, um, they do have like a five day lag on it. So if for whatever reason you miss one day, don't beat yourself up, get back on the wagon and carry on. You've got five days to do this. So, um, and in fact, for those of you that are on here, um, like let me know how you get on. If you don't want to post a comment here publicly on this page, I do have the Visibility Vibes tribe. Just click to join, um, I'll let you in there. No one can see what you're posting in there apart from the other people. Let me know how you get on. So that's all for today. Um, Ivona, I always wondered how you managed to do this, um, do so much in a day, Jenny. Exactly. I'm not busy doing busy, busy, busy things. <laughs> I, I'm, I meditate and I get stuff done. Um, and I'm willing to say, you know what, this isn't important. I take my guidance from my meditation. 
Hey, Kim. Kim says, thanks, Jane, a positive start to the week and to the next 21 days. Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited to hear how you all do with this. Um, Alison says, off on a school run. We'll listen to the rest later on playback. Thank you for joining, Alison. Thank you so much. It's great to see you on here again. France Lees, we're about to go. Good morning. Good morning, my lovely. I think you might enjoy this one this morning. Have a listen, let me know, and pop over into the Visibility Vibe Tribe. As I say, if you don't want to put a comment underneath here, which you're more than welcome to do, if you're listening on the replay, um, but if you don't want to put a comment on here, hop into the Visibility Vibe Tribe, nice, nice secret and sacred space, and you can um, you know, talk about all sorts of things from being more visible, being heard by your world, being seen. So um, Alan says, already listened to the child, it sounds good. Alan, it's immense. And having met you in the flesh now as well, Alan, I know you'll love it. It will stop all, and this is not just to Alan, this is to everybody. All of those um, kind of feelings of, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do, panic. If you're feeling like that about any area, any aspect of your life, there's not enough time or anything else like that. Go to, um, go to the Deepak and Oprah meditation challenge like right now. In fact, what I will do is I will go off and do that myself. I want to thank you so much for joining me and I want to say a special hi to France Lee. So thank you, France Lee. Thanks, Al um, Alan. Thank you, Alison. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Ivona. Thank you, Namisha. Um, and thank you just for joining and, and saying hi. And uh, thank you so much for being the first two on, Ali and Ian. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you hopefully again next Monday. Bring a friend or two or, or at least share this recording with them if they could do with this too. Lots of love to you. Have a fantastic week, fantastic end of October and fantastic beginning of the new next month. Bye for now. Thanks for the love.